Synovial joints by Jessica McAlpine. I have a few models of some of the joints that I'm going to talk about today. This is a pivot joint. It's made out of a cup and a chopstick. This is a ball and socket made out of Play-Doh. This is a gliding joint that moves backwards and forwards side by side. I'm not able to do it right now because I have my phone in my hand. And that is a saddle joint. It would move in this motion. Synovial joints allow considerable movement between articulating bones. The articular surfaces of bones within synovial joints are covered with a thin layer of hyaline cartilage called articular cartilage. The synovial membrane lines all joints except over the articular cartilage. It consists of a collection of modified connective tissue cells, either intermixed part of a fibrous capsule or separated by a layer of adipose or areolar tissue. A joint cavity in, is a joint cavity. Sorry. A joint cavity, I'm sorry, is a cavity filled with synovial fluid. Synovial fluid is slippery fluid found inside synovial joints and bursae produced by the synovial membrane. A periosteum is thick double layer connective tissue sheath covering the entire surface of a bone except the articular surface which is covered with cartilage. Other important facts about joints. Range of motion, origin, insertion, first class lever, second class lever, and third class lever. Range of motion is a full extension to full flexion, measured by degrees like a circle for the joints. Origin is the immovable part, insertion is the movable part. Temporalis is the temporal bone, temporalis. Temporalis' is origin is the temporal bone, and temporalis' insertion would be the mandible. A first class lever is, a full, is when the fulcrum is placed between the load, an example is the seesaw. Second class lever is when the load is between the effort and the fulcrum, an example is the wheelbarrow. And third class lever is when the effort is between the load and fulcrum, an example are scissors. And there are the different levels. This is the first class lever, second class lever, and third class lever. These are the joints. Again, um, this is the saddle joint. This is the ulna humerus. This is the ulna creates the saddle joint. This is the gliding joint. It is found in the metacarpals of the hand. This is the pivot joint. It is found in the neck. This is the hinge joint. It is found in the arm. And this is the ball and socket joint found in the hip. The fulcrum is the point where the lever is supported by pivots, supported and pivots. The load is the weight of an object, and applied force is the energy or effort provided. Mechanical advantage is the resistance force over applied force. And some more top terms that I probably didn't go over earlier are diathrosis. It is the articulation that permits free movement, which is good for the joints. Um, gliding joints are two opposed flat surfaces approximately equal in size. They are monoaxial because they can slide in many directions. Hinge joints are monoaxial as well because they consist of convex cylinders and one bone applied to a corresponding concavity in the other bone. An example is the elbow and knee joints. And a pivot joint or monoaxial as well restricts movement to rotation around a single axis. Each pivot consists of a cylindrical body process that rotates with a ring made of bone and ligament. Condylar jo joints are the site of junction between bones, especially one that allows mo motion in the jo bones. I'm so sorry, I'm messing up. And a saddle joint is a saddle-shaped articular surfaces that are convex in one direction and concave in another.